illness, he felt poverty, but he never once questioned why. Because he knew that that was a futile pursuit on his part. You're not going to get anywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assured you of something. Amma tarla ya Umar, aren't you pleased though Umar? That they have the dunya and for us belongs the hereafter? Wallahi, the most shocking thing about meeting those Syrian refugees, about going through the camps of the Syrian refugees, these are people who have lost everything. Everything. It's unbelievable how much they've lost. Family, wealth, possessions, everything, their career, everything. And subhanAllah, they are more content than we are. They complain less about life than we do. They're telling us Allah will give us more in the hereafter. No wonder why the Prophet said, the majority of the people of Jannah are the fuqara and the masakeen. The majority of the people of paradise are the poor and the downtrodden. They don't get, they get it. It hurts, but they get it. And they're telling us entitled, privileged, rich, spoiled Americans that it's okay. Allah knows. Allah will give us. Allah is great. We know that what awaits us in the hereafter is better than that which we have lost in this world. And so you cannot, dear brothers and sisters, start, start to grapple with the question of evil or the purpose of evil until you grapple with the purpose of life itself. Why are you here in the first place? Before you start asking about why things are not going the way you think they should be going, why are you here in the first place? If you don't work that out, then you're not going to work this out. And we see that through the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, where he constantly assures the believers that through hardship we often find Allah. How many people do you know, and in your own life, found Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their hardship? Found Allah in their pain? When things got shaken up a bit? Because otherwise they were complacent. How many people do you know that are like that? The Prophet ﷺ constantly assures us of that over and over and over again. That complacency is dangerous. And sometimes in ease we are complacent. But dear brothers and sisters, here's the problem. You look around and you see the suffering and you say, fine, you know, I can understand this, but I can't understand that one. I get this one. I can reason through this one. I can't reason through that one. Like I can get why maybe he went through that hardship. I don't understand why he went through that hardship. Or I can get why he went through that hardship, but why the extents of that hardship? Could have figured it out. Why do they have to keep on going through this? What's the point of these children suffering? You go back to the fundamental principle. Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. When the angels asked Allah, أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ Ya Allah, we've already seen what happens when, when fallible beings are given the earth. Are you going to go ahead and create a human race now? Where they will spread corruption and they will kill one another and spill blood? SubhanAllah, the angels didn't even see Adam yet. They knew it. They knew that fallible creatures will wreak destruction and havoc when they have power, they knew it. They didn't wait for a quote that absolute power absolutely corrupts. They knew it. Ya Allah, are you really going to do this? Are you going to create them? Are you going to give them this power? And what was Allah's answer? I know what you don't know. Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know what you don't know. Allah could walk them through perhaps one or two people and show them how each and every single thing that happened to them, that there was a wisdom for it. But at the end of the day, sometimes things are not going to make sense, even to the malaika, even to the angels. When you establish that foundation, inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun, who judges to what extent someone should suffer? Who knows the, 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 the present and future implications of suffering in an individual or community or country's lives? Who knows? Who can actually dissect all of that? Who can trace all of that and experiment on each person and derive the positives and the implications and how it's affected this and how it's affected that, that person and that situation and what it will do in the future? Who knows all of that? Nobody. 
So if you can come to the terms that I can't understand when something small happens to me, relatively small that I interpret as a hardship happens to me, I can't understand that but I trust Allah's wisdom, then why can't I trust Allah's wisdom when something major happens that I don't understand? What's, what are the variables, what are the parameters that you're going to, to, to accept? Was it not an issue in Palestine? It wasn't an issue in the Central African Republic, the Rwandan genocide, Bosnia, none of that was an issue, the Holocaust, that was, but this one's an issue? You have to establish a foundation. And that foundation is, Allah knows what I don't know. And I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with that. I'm assured with that. But I do know one thing. Allah is perfect, I'm not. Allah is perfect, I'm not. And the world is not perfect. But Allah has given me as an imperfect being the power to change a lot of the imperfection around me. That Allah has also put me as an agent of change to where I can do something about some of the stuff that's around me. So maybe I can't save every single child. And maybe I can't reason why each and every single person is going through what they're going through. But I do know that there are things that Allah has given me that I could change that I didn't change. And that I can change. Allah has given me the ability to actually do away with someone else's hardship. Whether it's financial or whether it's physical, whatever it may be. Allah has put you and I in a position to be able to change some things around us. And SubhanAllah, by and large, evil exists in the world when it's allowed to exist. Corruption exists in the world when people who claim to not be corrupt don't do anything about it. So that's where we put ourselves. And SubhanAllah, there's a powerful quote where a man once said that I wanted to ask God why he allows oppression and evil and suffering and poverty in the world. But I was afraid he might ask me the same question. Allah will ask you. You're not going to ask Allah. You will not ask Allah about His plan. You will not ask Allah about His judgment. Nor will you project your failures as humanity on Allah. Or your failures as an ummah on Allah. Or my failures as a Muslim or a human being on Allah. That's not my place. I can do what I can do. And I can be assured that the rest is within His ultimate plan. And that nothing no transgression, dear brothers and sisters, no transgression in this world, no oppression will go unchecked. Wallahi, each and every single one of these dictators, each and every single one of these oppressors will pay the price for their oppression. No doubt about it. The UN is not God. The US is certainly not God. They're not going to call anybody into account, but Allah will. And if you don't have that tawakkul and that trust, then that's going to shake your faith. And I have full trust in Allah that each and every single one of those peoples that, people that suffers, whether it's me or whether it's them, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only reward them for their struggles, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only do away with their pain, but Allah will do away with their pain in a way that they will not even know that they ever experienced pain. The zalim, the oppressor, will not forget his dhulm. The oppressed will forget what they've been through. And trust me, on the Day of Judgment, as the Prophet says, when the people who were tested severely by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are being given their rewards by Allah, dipped into Jannah, where the Prophet said they would forget any hardship they ever faced in life, those of us, Ahlul Afiyah, would see Ahlul Bala, the people who were generally pardoned, who lived easy lives, would see those people. And they would wish that they could cut their skins so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could reward them the way that He's rewarding the others. Think about that. Ask yourself what you can do. And do what you can do in your capacity. And stop ranting about what everybody else is not doing. Dear brothers and sisters, when one person that's close to us suffers, it's a tragedy. SubhanAllah, we look at it and we're so moved by it. But when hundreds of thousands of people suffer that we deliberately turn a blind eye to, the same thing we accuse God of doing, by the way. 
We deliberately ignore the suffering of millions and millions of people around the world. It's just a statistic. It's just a hashtag. But if it's a celebrity or someone that you know or someone that you've allowed yourself to constantly get to know over the years, then it's a tragedy. They break their leg, it's a tragedy. People's skulls are crushed that you don't see and it's not a tragedy, it's a statistic. The same thing we accuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of doing. Allah did not ignore them. We did. We did. Now, the point of this khutbah is not that we just feel horrible about ourselves. The point of this khutbah is what do you do about it now? How much are you giving? Ma'adhiratan ila rabbikum. Just an excuse before the Lord that I've tried to do my part. Whether it's lobbying for them, whether it's raising their voices for them, whether it's giving charity to them, whether it's making dua for them. What have I done for them? And that's a question we have to ask ourselves each and every single time we see tragedy unfold before our eyes and we see innocent people being killed. What can I do? What am I doing? The rest is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am assured in Allah's plan, but I'm not assured in my own efforts. What can I do different? And so when these things unfold, Allah's kingdom does not decrease at all, but our humanity does. Our humanity does. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to be in the service of people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our hearts to be such that we don't ignore the suffering of those around us or those that are far from us, but that we engage with it, that we feel empathy for it, and that we do what is in our capacity to do for it. Nothing more except for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and out of gratitude for what he's given to us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with our brothers and sisters all over the world that are suffering. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate their pain. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be instruments by which he alleviates their pain. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow the to, to stop the oppressors from their oppression. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stop the oppressors from their oppression. We ask Allah to guide us to where we are not oppressors and we are stopping other oppressors. Allahumma ameen, aqulu qa bihada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ala muslimin fa astaghfiru innahu wa al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, he robbed Alameen, while Arduan Illa Amavarameen, while Akiba to the Mutafin, Allah Mosali was Salam Mubarak, Al Abdika or Sulika Mohammedin Sallallahu, or any he was Salam, while Ali was Sahbihi was Salam to Seaman Kathira. Dear brothers and sisters, there is no fundraiser. There is no, I'm not going to ask you for your money for this cause. I'm not, there is no particular call to action for you except for all of us to reflect. The purpose of this Jumu'ah is to remind and for us to remember who we are as people and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to do and for us not to turn a blind eye and to each question ourselves what we can be doing. And I just want to leave you with one thought. Abdullah bin al-Harith radiallahu ta'ala anhu mentioned about the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in some poetic verses that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam could have shut his doors after the conquest of Mecca. Think about that. The Prophet Sallallahu grieved, he suffered, and he made it. He made it, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we all know what made it means. The Prophet Sallallahu was the authority. He ruled all of the land around him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had the adoration of his followers re replace the rejection of the people around him. He could have, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, got into a comfortable palace and waited for two years. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ Right? Allahumma inni balakht. I did my part. I did what I had to do. He could have ignored the suffering that continued to exist around him. But he didn't, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our ease is not an excuse for us to ignore the hardship around us. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide our hearts, guide our hands, and guide us in every way, our tongues, 
to support those who are being oppressed. Allah maghfir al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat al-ahya'i minhum wal-amwat inna ka sami'un qareeb wal mujib al-da'wat Allah maghfir lana warhamna wa'afu anna wa la tu'adhibna Rabbana zhalamna anfusana wa in lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunana min al-khasirin la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna min al-zhalimin la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inna kunna min al-zhalimin Allahumma naqqina min al-zhunub wal khataya lati takbis al-du'a wa naqqina min al-zhunub wal khataya lati تنزل البلاء اللهم اغفر لوالدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والكاذبين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم السالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء إذ القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكر الله يذكركم وشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة. As I was trying to say before my camera cut in the other uh, video, we have a choice. We have a choice to help people. We have a choice to do everything in this world. We shouldn't always say God is going to help them. We can help them. Like he said, um, this thing of turning a blind eye because it doesn't affect you makes you a problem before um, as well. Like I've said before, you're encouraging these people to continue oppressing people. You're encouraging them to keep on killing because we're not taking a stand and saying this is wrong. Someone has to call them. The, they formed all these organizations, but where are they when it comes to human rights? Where are they when they're depriving people? Of their rights why are they when they're stealing jobs from these people why are they when they're stealing joy from these people where are all these organizations it doesn't make sense at the end of the day these people are pressing like he said they're going to be they they have something coming for them they won't be on top forever they won't be untouchable forever but besides that we should trust that we should trust that God is there for them, God is there for us, God is there for everyone. And God sees each and everything that goes on. If you've got the means to help, then help. If you've got the means to um, um, bring up money, send people to school, provide people with food, do this and that, then do it. It's up to us to help the people that are suffering. It's up to you and I to make the difference that we want to see in this world. Millions of people are being killed. Nothing is being done about it. They always find a different way to justify what they're doing. He mentioned many countries. Different genocides have happened in different places. Why is no one answering for those things? Otherwise, like he said, it's always those people that are suffering that will forget suffering in the hereafter and things and things are never permanent today you're suffering tomorrow you're living the best of lives let's not look down upon anyone anything can happen to anyone but like i'm saying it's up to you and i to be each other's keepers let's protect each other we're all human at the end of the day there's something else i wanted to say but a lot of things are going through my head because this video was just hitting point after point after point but otherwise, I hope you guys um, heard the message, learned from the message and everything else. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And a big shout out to the person that uh, suggested this. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to...